this week is Parsha's Matos Masse. It's a double Parsha. It's the conclusion of the Book of Numbers, Bamidbar. It begins with um, a passage on about the ex about annulment of oaths. It starts that um, Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes and he told them that this is the um, charge that God has commanded. And the essence of the laws concerning oaths is that a person should consider every word that he says as to be sacred. He should not profane his word. And it means that if he makes a commitment, he should keep it. An oath is even stronger in that um, the essence of it is that you're um, saying that you should forfeit something if uh, you don't keep the oath. Uh, If you swear by the life of the king, you would be saying, so to speak, the king should die if you don't live according to what your commitment is. Um, If you uh, are swearing an oath in the name of God, it is much more stringent. As a result, a person should work very hard to keep his oath, and um, and even small deviations would be considered a significant offense. The Parsha, though, basically deals with the annulment of oaths, specifically that a man can annul the oaths of his uh, wife and the oaths of his minor daughters. Now, it doesn't specifically say his minor sons. It does not include his adult daughters. In addition to that, a um, widow or a divorcee would be considered pretty much the same as a man. So, it raises the issue of um, being gender specific in the Chumash. Uh, Jewish law is often gender specific. For instance, um, men are basically required to put on tefillin, to learn Torah, dwell in a sukkah during sukkahs. Women are um, not required to do so. Um, Women, on the other hand, are, it's much more stringent concerning the laws of adultery. A woman is um, required to be much more pure, much more committed to family purity. If a married man has relations with a single woman, it would be considered extremely objectionable, but it would not be considered a violation of the letter of the law concerning adultery. Uh, By and large, men are expected to be scholars and the leaders of the community. Now, you will have examples where women are the leaders. Miriam is mentioned along with Moshe and Aharon. You have Devorah, the, the judge. You have Huldah, the Nevia. Um, however, they tend to be exceptional situations. Uh, the concept of a woman's place tends to be... Um, captured in the last chapter of Mishle, Ashes Chayel, a song that is sung on Shabbos, okay, where it praises a, the, a woman of valor, where it says she makes fine clothes, she's a good cook, uh, she's a businesswoman, she's kind to the poor, uh, she has strength and dignity, she is wise and kind. She is praised by her hus- by her children. She is trusted by her husband. Uh, and above all, she has fear of God. Um, so what this is talking about is 
specifically um, differing roles in society, men being the political leaders, women being, uh, shall we say, the life of the home. Uh, a Rachel, our Imeno, Rachel, our mother, is considered ikeretabayit, the essence of the house. And, um, when it comes, returning to the uh, topic, though, of um, oaths, what we're talking about is um, the idea that there are people above us and people below us. Uh, that is why it starts with the um, commandment of uh, Moshe talking to the heads of the tribes, just like a, a woman to a certain extent considers her husband her superior and children consider their parents their superiors. Uh, we should also consider our leaders as superiors and we should also consider uh, God as our, uh, the, our king and our father. Um, in terms of um, the people who are superior to us, we are required to trust them and respect them. In terms of the people below us, we should deal with them with leniency and understanding. And um, where our hope is that God will also deal with us leniently and with understanding, especially when we make commitments that we should not have made in the beginning, that he will, so to speak, let us off the hook.